Another complex fill tool you could use is the unifill mode. What that allows you to do is input multiple stitch directions and subregions within a fill that have opposing stitch directions. Let's take a look at when and how to use it. To access the unifill mode, I would click and hold for half a second. The unifill mode is the third icon over. It's the fill that has two stitch directions going across it. When I let go, that is the tool that I now have available to me. You digitize it in a very similar way to the traditional mode in that I simply trace around my design or my element. So in this case, I'm going to do the E. I'm going to trace around my E. I'm holding the Alt key to keep those angles nice and um, 90 degrees. I'm going to hit Enter to complete that shape. Now it's asking, are there any holes? I don't have a hole in this E, so I hit enter. And now where things begin to change a little bit. Now I have a pair of scissors uh, beside my icon. That doesn't mean I'm going to insert a trim. It means I'm going to slice up my E into subdivisions or subregions. So if I look at the E, where would I have opposing stitch directions or where would I have different regions? When we did this before with a column tool, we definitely had this middle part of the E separate than the rest of the E. So that's where I think I'm going to divide this up. So I'm going to click and drag to create a subdivision. So the green line with the two green upside down triangles is the indicator for my subdivision. Now I have one area here and then the rest as another area. It is still asking for more subdivisions or splices. So I hit enter to move on. Now it's asking for my entry point, my exit point, and now it's asking for my stitch direction. So I can click and drag all the way across the form if I wanted. So now I have this stitch direction going all the way down. Here, I still have the stitch direction tool selected. With the unifill mode, I can input more than one stitch direction. So I can click and drag across the form this way and across the form this way. And because I have this green splice right here, I can have opposing stitch directions right here where those two pieces meet. So then I would hit enter to complete that shape. Let's take a look at it in 3D. It's looking at it as a fill. I'm going to select it and change it to a satin stitch so it looks more like the traditional letters that you would typically think of. Let's move over and do the A this time. So I'm going to grab my unifill mode. I'm going to do this, this time in red. So the first step, again, very much the same. Digitize around the form. Hit enter to complete the form. Now it's asking for a hole. This time I do have one. So I'm going to input it. Oh, got a little low on that one. Let me try that again. Hit backspace and put it in there. There we go. Hit enter. Now the hole is in there. It's still asking for a hole. I don't have another one, so I'm going to hit enter to move on. Now I'm ready to input my splices. So I'm going to click and drag across where I want those splices to be. There's one. Probably want another one on this other side. There we go. Hit enter to move on, because I don't have any others that I want to put in. I'll put in my entry point, my exit point, and now let me put in my stitch directions. So I definitely want to go across the A this way. Yeah, that looks about right. Now the crossbar, I definitely want to be going down. And so now if I take this out of 3D, you can see that it's navigating around the A. If I wanted a different type of top to this, I could add another stitch direction. I could click and drag across, and I could create a cap. So now I've got a cap. Let's actually change this to a satin so we can see this a little bit differently. I'm going to hit Enter to complete that shape. So now I've got my A looking very much like we had before. If I had wanted a miter for the A, I could have input another splice. 
Let me move this over for a second and we'll do it that way. So this time I'm going to grab my unifill. Let's make it satin. I'm going to digitize around my form. Up, over, hit enter to close the shape and put my hole put hit enter now it's asking for another hole I don't have another one so I hit enter again now it's asking for a splice so again we're going to take that crossbar and splice it off so it's its own region and this time we're going to add another splice right about here to give us that mitered kind of look hit enter now I'm asking for my entry point, click, my exit point, click, and now my stitch direction. So we'll go across here, so we've got the stitch direction going across, I'm going to change the crossbar to going vertically, and now I'm going to hit enter, and now I have a miter for this A. So we've got a cap, we've got a miter, all done with the unifill. Let's look at one other shape. So we've got the S. The S doesn't have any subregions, but it definitely has multiple stitch directions. So I'm going to grab my unifill tool, I'm going to digitize around the form. Being careful not to exceed 180 degrees in any set of three points. Finding those transitions, marking them with left clicks. Coming all the way around. Hitting enter to close the shape. Are there any holes? No, so I'm going to hit enter. Are there any splices? Not this time, so I'm going to hit enter. My entry point, my exit point, and now my stitch directions. So I can enter a stitch direction here, aiming towards the middle of those curves. There we go. And now I have a nice even S. I hit enter to complete that shape. So the unifill can be used to create more complex shapes, shapes with subregions, and shapes with multiple stitch directions.